quick, quickly about me. You just heard it. But I built these things and recently also initiated the ERC20 token standard uh, with Vitalik. And uh, that became a lot bigger than expected. And um, yeah, so when we think about identity, and this talk is about identity, and it's also an ERC. <laughs> what is identity, right? So if you think about identity today, my clicker doesn't work. Like it could be, for example, your physical um, attributions, right? Like it could be how you look or your bi biometric data and some kind of like physical properties attached to your physical person uh, and your body, for example, right? But an identity could also be the group you belong to, like the country you belong to, or even the history over time, like the reputation over time, or the things you experience, or your ancestors experience, and so on. And this is all what we kind of aggregate to uh, our identity. Today, obviously, identity are mostly like some kind of like forms and certifications we get from our government, or we get from like all kind of other places. For example, we have social security numbers, we have plastic cards, uh, we have passports and so on. This kind of like is what we think our identity is today and this is what we use in the world to represent ourselves. So w when we think about a passport, for example, what is it really, right? What is a passport? It's basically the fact that there was a government agency bureaucrat sitting somewhere and I came along with a birth certificate and a photo and uh, maybe they measured my biometric data and uh, they figured out, yeah, makes sense. It's all matching, I give you a passport. So basically it's a collection of things. And what it is, is actually a collection of claims. Because what I'm having here is I have a claim, the birth certificate, which somebody gave me when I was born, right? It's already a claim, but that person who was there, maybe it was the doctor or maybe it was the hospital, that I was born there, then I take a physical claim, which is basically a photocopy or maybe it's some biometric data scanned. And then it creates a new claim, now done by this guy here. There's no laser pointer there. And this creates now this new claim, a passport. So basically, almost everything is just a lot of like attestation we get from each other and we give to each other, right? For example, we could look at here this use case, I have passports or I get driver's licenses here. Or for example, I have a university degree and this is in the first place issued by a government to a person who can issue that degrees to in universities itself and they then issue a degree, and this is really hard here, uh, to, to another person, right? So it's a lot of claims on the end. It's all claims. It's a humongous network of claims and we came up with a lot of different type of claims, degrees, certificates and whatnot, and we collect them over time and it's kind of like how we represent ourselves in the world. Maybe not necessarily with our friends. With our friends we might use social networks, which is also kind of like a collection of claims. Um, but if we go to any kind of like company, corporation, we make an interview or whatever, we just take all of these claims, you know, we show them here, look, I have all of these titles and I did this and this and that. And this basically tells the other person, hey, yeah, I trust this university, it's a big one, looks like a real thing here, what he has. Uh, here, I might just hire him, for example, right? Mm. The problem with the current systems is that we have these huge institutions which issue claims and I'm the tiny little guy and I will receive these claims and uh, I, I kind of like the power sits in these institutions. <laughs> and it sits in the humongous data walls, right? So identity claims today is basically uh, not necessarily with me. I mean, it's with the papers I carry around, but it's kind of like a more like a monopolized ecosystem. What if we could decentralize all the things? We could just take that and distribute that power and that ability to uh, claim things about each other. And where do I have to point? I have to point this way. So for example, when we think about uh, 
standards, right? So what are standards good for? And uh, I initiated together with Vitalik, uh, basically I proposed that standard and there was a huge debate and on the end everybody started like using that standard. It really helped foster a few things. For example, if you look at the token example, right? The token standard and how it kind of came to be is we had already things like Bitcoin. And then people came with this idea, hey, make, let's make colored coins. And then there were these projects, MasterCoin, out of it later split it off Counterparty. And what's the idea is that we can basically create coins on top of Bitcoin. We have the same security like the, like the Bitcoin network, but we can create new coins and then companies suddenly can issue their own coins. And that was all really nice and neat. And it was kind of used, but not really big. Then Ethereum came along and also people started issuing tokens, inventing their own ideas of how a token can look like. And we had things like Big X, the gold token, which was kind of like the first, at least I know of, rather bigger custom token. But what really actually made this very interesting and very powerful is when you come up with a standard. Right? If you say, hey, a, a simple set of rules, you basically say, hey, let's make these three, four, five functions. Let's all use these functions as the, the operator, the interface towards the token. And suddenly we can have wallets, exchanges, other contracts interacting with those tokens. And suddenly you have a complete mess. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is actually what spurred all this, this craziness, let's say, because suddenly we have a rather simple standard, which doesn't really even determine much, but it allows so much flexibility still inside that all of this experimentation and all of this crazy new ways of how using it became possible. And that's why it took off so big and it's still like obviously in the rocket ship flying wherever. So it's actually all about standards. If we have standards, it allows us to basically interoperate and be compatible. And especially in a, a platform like Ethereum where you have an endless amount of possibilities of what you can do and how you can interact and what you can create. Standards are really the key to make a viable ecosystem flourish. So I thought about like a few years about, uh, uh, two years about like kind of like how identity could look like, was working back then uh, with a client and thinking about this idea and I kind of like had this idea, okay, it should be a smart contract and it should represent you and la 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 la. And I thought about it and really until now I didn't came up with any way different solution than the one I had back then. And um, actually always expecting that somebody else would came up with a standard and make an ERC, which didn't happen, so I did it. <laughs> um, so I created this standard or I initiated it um, and on the end, it will only become a standard if everybody uh, participates and everybody agrees. That's, that's the whole point of a standard. And it now has the number 725. And I created this, this standard which basically defines a smart contract which represents you, right? It represents not even a person. It could also represent a machine or it even could represent a, an item, an object or a company. So this identity standard basically consists out of three components. So it, it itself is a smart contract, which is representing you. And it has these three components. It has keys, which are your operators. It uh, can execute, so it can actually act on the blockchain as you. And it has claims. So I will now explain these three pieces here and then show some examples of how this can work. The idea is basically that you have these keys and this is how you act in the world, right? So for example, you can make transactions obviously on the blockchain, you can send money around and then you can prove with that that if this is one of your keys in your identity that it obviously must be done by you. I can also sign any kind of documents or I can send, sign any kind of proofs or messages in the real world proving that it was me doing that. As long as I attach my identity to it, the person seeing the signature can verify the signature and can assume a very li high likelihood that it was me. So actually the list is like unlimited because what you could do with these kind of things uh, is like not very limited in, in this sense. The idea is 
and this is the beauty of uh, public-private key cryptography, is that we can have this kind of control over, we can basically like validate ourselves in the, in the real world, and others can provably uh, validate this, this as well. They can check that this is correct without ever, I ever have to reveal my password or my, my secrets or whatever. And I think we are just getting started into the age of uh, key signing, right? So where we do this then all the time for basically everything. And a really simple use case for this, for, for example, would be logins, right? I can simply uh, sign a message, I wanna go into your website and they can prove that, maybe even check my identity and do some kind of verification process and they can let me in and I never send my password over the wire or anything and I could even use a third party two-factor authentication device. The other part is, and because it's a smart contract, I can execute. So this standard has a execute function which allows you to act as yourself on the blockchain. So you could either use the keys to do actions on the blockchain and then somehow like point the people you interact with to your identity so they can check things about you, or you can actually act directly through your contract. And this really important thing is that you can add other claims to other identities or to other people, objects, or even other smart contracts, which might just be code. And you can claim that, for example, you verified them or maybe you're an issuer about claims, maybe you're a government, and you can attach claims and it's very provably coming uh, from that identity. And the third part, and that's actually the important part, which is its own ERC. After some discussion, we decided uh, moving it out in ERC 735 and basically making it a substandard of the 725. And the idea is really uh, to have a way to attach claims to a smart contract. And now we have all to debate exactly how this can look like. And I have an initial draft up there of how this can look like and how it can work. The benefit of claims in your own identity, it can be added by anyone, but I always have to approve it, right? If it's my identity, I want to need to I want to be able to approve it because I don't want that things are attached to my identity uh, which I don't really agree to. This is especially important if I'm a person. If I'm a smart contract, maybe an approval is not even needed. Maybe a smart contract can just like get a bunch of claims and randomly people can do that. And it can't be changed without my permission. Or it can be changed without my permission. So basically, the person who issued the claim about me on my identity, once I approved it, they are technically in control because they issued it, right? But if I don't, for example, if they change something about the claim and I'm not agreeing, I could always remove it because it's on my identity. So I can allow it to add, but I can also take it off any time. If I disagree with a change, or for example, if they change the data hash and uh, I never really was in their office again or whatever. And the important thing about the claim structure in this uh, standard is that the uh, claim itself contains an actual signature. And the beauty about having it in the smart contract and having a signature, that this could be any kind of signature. The difference here, for example, if you would make a registry with claims, then it's always, the, uh, always has to be an Ethereum uh, signature, it's an Ethereum transaction, and the smart contract registry will determine how these claims are added. But this is a really open container because it can be all kind of different type of signatures in the future. It doesn't need to be an Ethereum one. It could be anything. And um, it obviously contains the actual claim reference or claim data. It really depends on what kind of claim it is. Most of the cases, you don't want to store any kind of actual data on the blockchain. You don't want to store an actual claim, like it may be here your um, the bytes of your photo or uh, maybe your actual address, you only want to claim uh, add the claim with the reference to the actual data. So the actual data will still sit somewhere else and this is to be debated. This could be sitting in Swarm, IPFS, or this could be sitting with the company directly still. But in some cases even, might be you wanna have a bit mask or something which actually says something about you right in the bytes of the claim where there's more detailed uh, claim uh, details, so to say, in it. 
So basically how this could look like in, in detail, how it's currently uh, in, the, in the standard, and because it's a smart contract standard, it's obviously code. Um, we have a claim type, and the claim type, for example, says, maybe it's a claim type 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, maybe we say 0 is the claim for uh, biometric data, and 1 could be the claim for uh, an address. So if I see you on your smart contract, you have a claim type 0 and a claim type 1, and they're both issued by an issue I trust. Maybe it's the German government and uh, maybe it's the Deutsche Post, which knows your address, and I trust them, then the only thing I have to check is, does the signature actually contains, uh, contains actually the holder address, which is the, issue, uh, the address of, the, of me in this case. It contains this number here, the claim type, and it contains this little data, and it comes out to an address which is still owned by the Deutsche Post or the German state, then I know that claim was actually issued by the Deutsche Post or the German state. And as long as any external party trusts that issuer, he can be completely confident that you have an address and that you're a human. Or maybe some kind of flesh thing, <laughs> right? If you have biometric data. Um, and that might be fully enough to allow you access to something to issue credit or to issue a, an account or, or whatever you want to do in an automated process. So it's all about basically trusting the claim issuers. And this obviously depends on, on what kind of like issues this could be. And uh, on the beginning, this probably will be big institutions. But in the future, this could also be peer-to-peer -peer networks or other kind of reputation systems or whatever the claim can be, uh, it's, it's completely open, right? So how would the process look like? And I have three minutes, so I have to go faster. For example, like uh, a off-chain example could be here, I'm walking around with my uh, smartphone, simple use case, I wanna get into a disco, and the guy has to prove that I'm over 18 or whatever. So he would basically send me from his phone a random string and this random string is something I can sign and I will sign this random string plus my identity address and send it back to him, he will be able to verify, okay, this was signed by this key and he signed my random string so obviously he could, he had the private key, he could sign it properly and yes, there is his address, his identity. So he goes, check on the blockchain, gets the claim he needs or whatever claim that is, right? Maybe it's the age, whatever or an age certificate that's over 18 says, uh, says over 18 or so. Um, he basically checks the claim, and this means he checks the signature, and, and goes and checks on the smart contract of the issue that actually the key he, they signed with is still there, so this would be the power for the issue to re remove a claim, even though that I, I might not agree to. So as long as the signature is correct and returns a address still owned by the issuer, this person here, the bouncer, can be uh, confident that this person is whatever the claim says it does. And it might be a very abstract uh, information, maybe just over 18. That doesn't even mean he's 20, 30, 50, or 110. It just says it's over 18. Or he's allowed to just go in for whatever reason, right? So you, you could do this in the off-chain world basically by going around and signing messages all the time. And then people can always go to your blockchain identity and check, hey, who is that person? Does he have the right requirements? And you can verify these kind of requirements. If I do this on the blockchain, I basically can act through my identity. I can call a function on another smart contract. And this could be the super important, cool uh, smart contract and I really want to use that function, but this function requires to check some identity stuff, otherwise it can't be used. So the smart contract will automatically realize, okay, an identity is calling me, so I get the claim from this identity smart contract back, I will verify the signature right in the smart contract, go to the issuer's smart contract and check that the key is still there, I know the key is still there, so it's a valid uh, claim still attached here, I trust the issuer, I don't even need to know the actual data. Most of the time we don't care about the actual data. I don't care how, what your name is or how you look like until uh, as long as I know that you are a person and that you have maybe a residence somewhere where, it's in, where maybe it's a country or whatever. Or maybe it's just enough to know that you have a residence at all. 
And that's it. I can continue with the execution of the uh, super cool function in this case. So you can do this, you can use this on chain and you can use it off chain. And my time is off. Um, and uh, you can basically do these really simple steps of uh, actually two or three steps to completely verify the claim. And it's attached to my identity, so I'm full in control. And um, this allows basically all of these interesting things. And it combines these, these two little, uh, rather simple standards. And it gives enough flexibility that all kind of experimentation can happen. So we can figure out what kind of claims we trust, how these claims can look like in detail, where they are stored, how could you even verify the claims actually content make the NSTK snark uh, proof outside of the blockchain? Uh, people can come up with all kind of systems they want to claim about each other. And as long as we follow the simple standard, we have that interoperability, which can create all of this network effect we see with ERC20, for example. So it's all about uh, discussing and coming to an agreement what makes sense, start playing around and uh, making a huge experimentation around it. Thank you.